I'm Marroquin. I am an admissions representative here, and I'm excited to talk to you at, all about our student housing, right? We're going to highlight, calling it a neighborhood highlight. So we're going to talk today all things KU student housing. We have uh, a great guest today to discuss some of our housing options, additional information, and I'll just quickly go over our, just our schedule for today. There we go. Again, thank you all so much for joining us. We will shortly here have a housing overview from our Associate Director of Housing, Jackie McKenna. So she's gonna give you awesome information and tidbits about life on campus, about our residence halls, scholarship halls, things of that sort of nature. We'll then transition over to a live Q&A, which we'll, we took some of your questions that you had and we're gonna, uh, we'll have Jackie kind of expand on those and give you some more information as well. And then following that, we will have a live look and a tour of some of our spaces on campus. That includes the scholarship halls as well as some of our resident halls as well. Great, so for right now, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna invite Jackie to come on and we appreciate her being here and giving us that presentation. All right, hi, welcome everyone. It's so exciting uh, to be with you here tonight. As Juan Pablo mentioned, I'm gonna share some information about housing. So um, today, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna give you an overview of what your housing options include here at KU uh, and hit some highlights of our, our different housing options we offer. I'll, I will also talk about our application process, how you sign up for housing, and then the timeline for room selection and all that great stuff. And then I'm uh, also gonna address some of the questions you've already sent in and, and go from there. All right, so KU Student Housing uh, has a variety of options for you. Um, we've got plenty of choice. That includes our nine different residence halls, our 12 scholarship halls, and our three on-campus apartments. As you can see um, on this screen, we have housing all over campus and it's kind of uh, form, it forms in different neighborhoods. Uh, so we have a big group of halls we call Daisy Hill, uh, where we have a bunch of residence halls. We also have our scholarship hall community all together. And then we also have our central district and our north district. So no matter where you wanna be on campus, housing has a place for you. We currently house uh, around 6,000 students and about 80% of our first year class lives on campus with us. And so we are welcome or we're excited to welcome you um, as Jayhawks when you come to live on campus and start your journey with us. Uh, to talk a little bit more about your housing options, those nine residence halls, um, three of them are, uh, were built since 2015. So we have a lot of new options with a lot of convenience and, and modern amenities. We also have more traditional style halls. So there's something for everyone within our, our communities. Um, within our halls, we do have a variety of different room types and styles. You can check out um, all of our different residence halls and we are gonna go see some here in a few minutes, uh, but you can see our different room types layouts. You can also see photos of them. We offer housing that's everything from that traditional style residence hall. So two students sharing a room together, using a community bathroom that's located on your floor, all the way up to uh, semi-private and suite style options where uh, both semi-private and suite style include a bathroom within the room. Um, a suite style housing option has a bathroom, a bedroom area, and like a common room or a living room space for students to live in. One of the great things about on-campus living is everything that's included in your housing. Um, so you sign up for it and then lots of other things just are included such as your laundry. We also include cable, internet, uh, printing for students, utilities, everything is included in that. So you as a student don't need to worry about that. Once you've selected your housing option, you're set and good to go with all the other things. Um, Again, we have a variety of different room types and styles, different locations for, on campus for students. We also offer two academically focused uh, communities. One is for our engineering learning community that's located in Self Hall. And then we also have a designated honors community. Students in the honors program or students in the engineering program can sign up for those communities to live there. Um, also in the residence halls, 
Uh, most of our residence halls are co-ed. Uh, Corbin Residence Hall is our only um, all-female residence hall, and we also offer gender-inclusive housing on campus for students. Uh, we also have 12 scholarship halls, and this is a little bit of a different uh, uh, living experience for college students. These are cooperative living environments. Um, these 12 halls, students contribute through the, to their community through either assigned tasks of cooking or cleaning in the halls. And because they are contributing to the operations and the community of that uh, building, they have our lowest cost housing and dining on campus. Um, so these students um, do apply for the scholarship halls. Selection is based off of a few criteria. One is academic. So we look at if you, uh, your high school GPA, a standardized test score if you have that. We also consider the application you fill out, which is reviewed by current residents. And finally, we also consider financial need. The combination of those three things helps us to determine eligibility for the community. Again, it's a combination of those three things. Uh, really popular community to live in. It houses around 600 students, and that's both a mix of first year students and upper class students because we find students tend to want to live there for multiple years. Um, there, I want to be clear, there's no requirement that you're receiving a scholarship from KU in order to be eligible for this community. Again, it's based on that application process. But a huge benefit of this community is that we've had very generous donors, many of whom are former um, students that lived in the scholarship halls that have created numerous scholarship opportunities for the students living in this community. Um, so we are able to um, award over a quarter of a million dollars worth of scholarships right back to the residents of this community. Oftentimes you have, uh, one of the requirements is that you've lived in the scholarship halls for one year uh, in order to be eligible for the scholarship. So this is great um, after your first year helping you to um, help to afford and pay for school. Um, we've had this community for 90 years, so it is a huge tradition here at KU. And again, there is that short application uh, students would fill out. We do have a mix of both uh, male halls, female halls, and co-educational or co-ed halls in the scholarship halls. So there's a variety. There's also different room types and styles and lots of different unique features and traditions within this community. Finally, our third uh, housing option for students is our on-campus apartments. Um, these are uh, units that have a bedroom, bathroom space, but also a kitchen uh, that the students can access. We have three different apartment complexes on campus, Jayhawker Towers and McCarthy Hall, which are for upper-class students, and then Stouffer Place. And Stouffer Place also has a designated first-year community within uh, that larger complex. And so again, everything's included uh, with these units. Uh, all utilities are paid and um, again, wireless, uh, internet and uh, cable along with laundry included. Um, for our students that uh, live in the first year community in Stouffer, um, some have the option uh, to either not have a meal plan on campus or be able to get one of our smallest meal plans, giving them the flexibility and uh, a time to be able to cook for themselves. So if that's something you really enjoy, that could be a great option as you're looking uh, for housing. In addition to the physical space we provide, we are here to support you to be um, the most successful student you can be at KU. So we really wanna focus on how do we help you to be successful in the classroom and in the ac academic environment here at KU. And so we really work to uh, personally attend to students, helping them as they're navigating the college environment uh, we make sure they have resources and support available in the community. Um, every hall and every community has a, a resident assistant or a current undergraduate student who is highly trained on university resources and support, but they're right there. Someone who's a current student that can relate to you and your experience and maybe some of the challenges you're facing to help you to navigate those. Uh, we're really focused on supporting our students and so we work to provide conveniences and services that are gonna help you to be a better student. One of those things is that 
we don't charge for printing in our halls. Uh, we have um, networked printing, so you can print your paper on your way to class if you're needing to. If you're working on an assignment, you can do that. A lot of our facilities are um, designed to help bring students together in community, and it's, it's a little awkward saying that right now as we're in the middle of a global pandemic, but we want to make sure students are connecting in community. And even right now, uh, with the social distancing guidelines and the restrictions we're having um, as a community responding to the coronavirus, we're still working to build community in various ways with our students that are living here on campus right now. And just figuring out how do we work and live within these restrictions to still help students to connect and build community so that they can be successful, but also find support and resources while they're here um, on campus. We also, you know, we are here to serve you as a student. So your housing contract is based around your academic needs as a student, uh, making sure that fits for you and what you need as a student. Um, so how to sign up for housing. So um, for our current seniors in high school, uh, once you've been admitted to KU, you can apply to housing at any time. Our housing application opened up in uh, or on October 7th and um, you can apply to housing. There's a $50 application fee. It'll take you in to sign your contract and that puts you in line to select your room and space in the spring. From now until the spring, we'll have an opportunity for you to fill out um, you know, a uh, roommate survey. So if you're looking for a, a potential roommate to live with while you're here at KU, you can fill out a survey and it'll help you to connect and find students that you might have compatibility with and connect before you would select your room and space in the spring. Um, we will open up our scholarship hall application in early November for students to start to apply to that community. Um, and we will be working to uh, get students selected for that community prior to room selection in April. And then all of our incoming students who aren't going to be in a scholarship hall will select their room and space starting in April. Uh, you get to pick where you live on campus. So you pick the building, you pick the room, all the way down to what side of the hallway it's on. So um, students do select their housing based on the order that they contract for housing. So it does benefit students to apply early. If you're still shopping around and trying to decide if KU is the place for you, that's okay. You can still apply to housing. And then if you, for some reason, are not going to come to KU, you just need to let us know by June 1st. Um, as long as you do that, you are good to go and you know us, you owe us nothing but your application fee, unless you're going to live with us and then we'll set you up with that. But um, we, we are working already with students that are signing up for housing and helping them as they're you know, looking at different choices and options and eventually making their decision. So that's very quickly an overview of housing, our different housing options and the application process. Um, are there any questions that we have, uh, Juan Pablo, that I can answer about housing? Absolutely, thank you so much for the presentation, Jackie. I'm gonna pull up some of the questions that you all submitted here. We have just about three questions that we're gonna go over uh, and expand upon. So I'm gonna share our presentation again. Great. Okay, so some of the questions that we got, I'd like to start with, you know, you mentioned the, uh, the ability for students to hop onto your portal and to connect with other students based on interests and everything to find roommates. Um, for out-of-state students, you, you found that that traditionally is like that helps a lot, that they found great roommates. Uh, why don't you expand more on that? Yeah, sure. So um, finding a roommate can be something that students really want to engage in and, and work to do. Our roommate matching uh, process that we have allows you to answer some general questions and then you're able to uh, seek and find other students who answer questions similarly that might help you to find compatibility. It also allows you, we have sort of an, an open box where you can just talk about yourself. And so it allows you to expand um, about yourself and what you're looking for in a roommate or maybe what you're looking for in terms of a, like where you wanna live on campus. Um, to connect with other students. You are not required at all to find a roommate match. Um, if you find someone and it's gonna be a great fit for you, we wanna make sure you have um, opportunities to do that. But let's say you, you, know, you either aren't interested in finding a roommate or you maybe don't find someone uh, that you connect with, 
you can always just go ahead and select your room and space. Other students are going to do the same thing, and that's how you're matched up as roommates. Once you arrive to campus, we have a very extensive roommate agreement process that we work through with students to help them to establish, you know, what kind of a relationship, what kind of um, an atmosphere are they wanting to create in the room to help them to be successful. We also have students talk about things that might be challenges for them and might cause conflict. And we also get them to talk about and make a plan of what they're going to do. We find once we do that, students tend to be much more effective roommate pairs. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so as you kind of talked about the different options on campus, are there any specific buildings that are designated as freshmen only? Sure. We do have three buildings that are three buildings and then that one community in Stouffer that are freshmen only. And those three uh, freshmen only buildings are self, Oswald, and Ellsworth Hall. Only freshman students are allowed to live in those halls. The rest of our residence halls are primarily freshman students. So 85 to 90 percent of the community is still going to be freshmen. Those three are 100 percent freshmen only. Now Stouffer Place Apartments does have a community of first-year students that it, it's only first-year students. So your neighbors, the people living down the hallway from you are still all going to be first-year students even though there's an adjoining building in the complex that are upper-class students. Great. I think that a lot of the, the best way to make the KU community feel a lot like home is to really bring students together. So what kind of events do you have, uh, you know, in the residence halls and in our housing community to really heighten that KU experience? Sure. So uh, one of the things we work to instill in every community. So when I say community, I'm talking about your smaller community, your floor environment or maybe your scholarship hall. We work to have them establish what we call a weekly tradition, and that can be um, eating supper or dinner together every Tuesday at a specific time, or um, oftentimes it's getting together for a game night or board games or uh, study sessions. So you'll have informal, you know, events and gatherings like that. We also do large scale programming such as, you know, um, outdoor movies. Uh, they we also have. Um, different gatherings with, you know, um, arcade games or um, video game type things. Uh, and also it's just what students want to do. We work to give them vehicles. So we, every community has what we call a hall programming board where they take input from the community of events and things that they would like to see happening. Everything from a coffee house to, you know, um, a video game tournament or whatever the students of that community are wanting. And then we give staff support and resources to help make those events happen. And that could be at the community level of a floor, a building wide, or even um, university wide events, helping to engage students. We also work very closely with our campus partners to help students to connect with uh, social and academic engagements that are happening throughout the campus community uh, to make sure that our students are also aware of them and have the ability to get to them as needed. Wonderful. Jackie, thank you. Thank you so much. Those are the questions that we had kind of put together for our presentation today. Are there any last questions that you students have uh, for Jackie before she, she heads on out tonight? I'll stick around and try to get to some that are in the chat box, but um, you're always welcome to contact us at KU Student Housing. Uh, you can email us housing or housing at ku.edu or you can visit us housing.ku.edu for more information about any of our communities. Well, great. Well, Jackie, again, thank you so much. We really do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to meet with us and, and to speak with students. It's awesome information. But right now, we're going to transition to our live look portion of the event. So to those scholarship halls as well as the residence halls. So I'd like to invite uh, Zion from our from live from our scholarship halls to give you a a big look into everything. All right, thank you, JP. So we're out here outside of Crawford Community Center, which is about the little heart of our scholarship hall community over here. What I love about the scholarship halls is both our location and our community. For our location, we are a pretty central location for both academic buildings on campus and as well as off campus amenities, which makes it a great place to live. With our community aspect, Jackie mentioned a little earlier, everybody in your specific hall works together so we cook and clean for ourselves so it's a great little community everybody there wants to make the hall better personally i cook for my hall 
So I enjoy doing that. It's so much fun. I learned so much at my hall. And with that, she did also mention there are 12 uh, scholarship halls in total. So each hall will have a sister hall. We have weekly and bi-weekly events, as well as big semester events to make the community aspect really, really great. Well, that's why so many people stay in the scholarship halls all four years, and it's just a great place to live. I personally love the scholarship halls, and I wouldn't change my decision to live here at all. And with that, I'll be passing it over to Kyle. At oh. Hey, everyone. It's Kyle. I'm here at the Daisy Hill Commons, specifically Oswald Hall. I'm going to give you guys a little tour of what your dorm room, normal dorm room, would look like. In here is a shared bathroom between you and your roommate, which you will have. Um, there are different styles that you may have a community bathroom. You may have a specific shared bathroom with your roommate. It really depends what you choose. Over here, you have two different closets, your own closet, so you don't have to split with your roommate. Um, you are supplied a dresser, so you don't have to worry about bringing that. And you have overhead space for any storage that you do need. On top of that, we get into the actual living part of the room where you have two lofted up bunk beds that can be brought down if you want. Um, the beds are also supplied along with the dresser, uh, the desks as well. So the only thing you need to bring in, you can bring in a futon if you'd like, a mini fridge or a microwave on top of that. Just spruce up your room in any way you really want to. There are living um, options between a two person and a four person, depending if you want a suite. Um, it's all personal preference and each of our residence halls do have different options that you can choose. Again, we're here on Daisy Hill specifically, which is home to our six of our 10 residence halls. But yeah, that's a little gist of what we have here in Rock Chalk. All right, thank you so much, Zion and Kyle. I'm going to kind of just wrap things up here from our end really quickly. But I just want to say that we are really thankful that you all are here today. Um, we, we know that things are looking very different this year. And hopefully these presentations and events that we have, uh, you know, today and moving forward really highlight that KU experience.